I'm in Vietnam. I uh, spent two years in Vietnam. Almost there every day. Uh, I, I within those two years, come back to the state probably like three times uh, to renew my passport <laughs> and to visit my parents. But the time I spent there, I pref I've, I've learned to speak Vietnamese. And I've uh, read books, I go to those um, bookstore to specifically seek out English book translate to Vietnamese so that way I can learn both. I learn the language and I learn the message. So after a while, um, my friend and I used to have a race of how many pages you can read in a day in a session. Uh, 150 was my record for one session of reading at a coffee shop where I sit by the river and I just read this book and learn the Vietnamese. Um, and I become good at the Vietnamese languages. Uh, when I do solar now, when I get up to um, Vietnamese television channels, I would talk. Um, older generation would be very surprised and very impressed by my Vietnamese language skills. And it gives credibility to my business. Uh, and it help um, my business become more successful. Um, so, when I was in Vietnam, I told you, briefly told you about the story of, uh, of, of how I came about to become uh, in this solar industry. But let me kind of dissect it, that process a little bit. So I had the idea of like, okay, I need to be in the solar. I need to be in this industry called solar. How do I get there? So first thing you need is, of course, the uh, contractor license um, and a solar license. So I need to get this at all costs. I had general, general contractor experience in the past doing um, um, work around, especially in Hawaii. Um, but to really learn about this test is completely foreign language to me. So I delegate six months for me to get this thing done. Um, the only way I know how is to sign up for three different schools and collect all three different school material and learn them all. And I have six months to do it. And it was 10 hours a day. I got stressed out because my best friend uh, asked me to become his best man in, in, in his wedding. And I was like, oh my god, I'm going to miss two days because of, uh, of being there at his wedding. How am I going to make it up? You know. So that is the determination I set for myself. So 10 hours a day, which is not that much, but day in day out, um, and to study. And some of these things are, I have a uh, laptop my computer. And some of these saw or equipments I have to Google them to see what it looked like. Because uh, for the general B, you need to know all different kind of trade. So I memorize, I memorize, I study, I memorize, and uh, I still have um, most of those um, uh, flashcards. I have 1,600 of those, and I have retained a 90 plus percent on all those cards, so 16 of those cards. I kind of force fed myself this information. I need to do it, okay? So I need to do it and to get it done. And I cannot fail, there's the urgency, the time. Um, so with that, I, um, I passed on my first try, and uh, I got my license. Um, and then I put myself to solar school. And then once I got those license, um, I was a job shadow for a uh, solar company here in San Diego. And I had to hide all my credentials because to be honest, you always there for one single purpose only, to learn the business. And so um, I, um, I begin to, as a door knocker, I wear my shirt, orange, whatever shirt, knock, 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 hi, would you like to go solar? No! Boom! Close the door. Go to the next house. <laughs> six months of that. Six months of door knocking. And, and I'm dark skinned, but I was really dark by the time I <laughs> finished my, my door knocking uh, thing for 10 bucks an hour. But I was happy to do it. I was, my goal was I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn from the bottom up. I'm going to learn it real well. And start with sales. Right? Sell the product. So six months of that, I, I was quickly become their top door knocker. I got promoted to this position called energy consult consultant. And, um, and of course, I excel there too, and ultimately I, I move up and ultimately become a, a closer. Um, become a closer meaning you come there to convince people to sign up for the contract, etc. And uh, the company was uh, 50 employees strong, um, and a lot of them are on the general um, sales and lead generations uh, level. There's only four um, energy consultants. There's two, sometimes three, closer for the company. 
and after that you got sales manager, and after that you got the, the director of uh, operation, and after that you got the CEO of the company. The CEO of the company is a um, Jewish guy from New York, very self-driven, very cutthroat, very, very high pressure sales, and do whatever it takes to get a deal done. So, um, and we were very expensive. I was feeling very bad. Sometimes I even in front of a Vietnamese customer with my boss sitting next to me, monitoring the deal. I would tell them in Vietnamese, please don't sign the deal because my company is very expensive and please don't make a certain movement. That's what I did. Because that what the, yeah, I did that. And I and I felt for the customer. And I felt so bad for everybody that signed to get solar. Because it it's uh it doesn't have to be that expensive. So um, to light my passion even more, um, by that time I worked very close with this, my director. So um, I couldn't take it anymore and I said, okay, well, I'm ready. I'm ready to venture out and to, to do solar right, to do the customer right. Um, so I asked, um, I turned in my letter of resignation, resignation and my director approached me and said, hey, wherever you go, make sure you find a spot for me because you and I work very well together, and uh, you know um, I like to continue our, our, our uh, you know our, our partnership. And so I said, well, give me some time. Three months later, I came back to him and say, well, sir, you asked me for this. Now here I am. I, I formed a new company. I want to start a solar company. I, I would love to be company. Uh, he said, well, what do you mean you start a company? Um, you would need a contractor license. This? Whoa! Well, you need a solar license too. You mean this? What? You have all this, all this time? I was like, yeah. And so that's how Chuck Partridge came to join me with Build Green California. Uh, Chuck Partridge is my director of operation now. Along with Chuck Partridge, we also bring Joe Robertson, which is my fuel supervisor or door knocking team. And our lead installer, Andrew Stone, also came and formed what today is Build Green. Um, when we first written our first contract, Chuck and I were sitting in a subway because we didn't have an office. So we wrote our first contract, proposal, not even contract, in the subway. And looked at each other like, oh boy, here we go. Um, and talking about Chuck, it's a funny story. He, um, I asked him to join the company. He said, yeah, yeah, you know, but um, how much can you pay me? And I was like, well, I don't have much money. Uh, how much do you need uh, to spend a, a, a month? And would tell me a number, and I'd say, "Okay, I can afford to pay you two thousand um, dollars. What can, what else can we do?" He said, "Well, I can, I can pick up my landscaping out, and I can create income to upset my bills." And I said, "Great, I'll help you to do landscaping on Thursday and Sunday to 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 make income for you, so you can work this thing bigger than me." So for six months, that's what we did. We do solar and we do landscaping for Chuck and to to build one customer at a time, and. Uh, until today, Chuck um, uh, is, is, a, is very, uh, he's good financially. Um, Andrew Song uh, was only engaged to his, uh, uh, his high school streetcar then, but now he got married, he got his home, he got his first kid, and now he got his second kid under Bill Green, California. Jill Robertson, too, she bought a home, she can drive a new car, and her kids is wonderful. So, together, um, um, you know, with hard work and with a single from the passion to do this. Um, so the, the moral of that story is, you know, I, um, the success, or the so-called success that we got today, because to me it is not a success. I mean, I have, um, lately, Kaiko and, and, and Taco knows, I, I've been very busy. Um, I've been securing partnership with this new lease program that will, um, offset nonprofits. It's catered to nonprofit groups. Uh, there is no such thing exists uh, yet. So I partnered up with this um, high-profile CEO guy to create this new lease where church and temples or nonprofit groups don't have to have any money to go solar. Um, it's a it's a wonderful cause, but it, it requires a lot. So we are 90 plus percent done with that. Uh, after that, you're going to see a lot of churches and temples and, and nonprofits have solar. Because it won't cost them any more money. Um, so, passion. It started with my passion. It 
start with my um, uh, wanting to do good for society. You know, it wasn't financially motivated to start solar because if it was financial motivated, I would have given up long ago, guys. Um, I'm still poor, but I was a lot poor a couple of years ago and I owe a lot more money due to inexperience, you know, into um, blink of an eye, boom, wake up one day and there's a couple million dollars in revenue. And how do you manage that? And so I make a lot of mistakes, you know, but, but my passion, my passion to do good, and my passion to, to you know, the, the things that I did in the past based on passion continue to give me strength. Customer, I mean, Toshi wrote a beautiful letter to, to, that I read to, to my employee, you know, and all those things give them food for the soul. You know, and every payroll, we will have uh, a cookout for the, uh, for the employees. And we will have one or two thanking letters from, from the employees. Read. And so all those things have solidified ourselves to be who we are today. And all those things started with one single thing called passion with Obama. Listening to Barack Obama. And, and my passion of installing fire her solar system to do good for Mother Earth. So um, that's pretty much my story. I. Um, Know, to uh, to have the gut, some of the final messages, you know, work on your passion, guys. Work on your, don't let the uh, society influence you of who you become. Uh, don't, don't ever do that. Don't ever let peer pressure force you to who you are. Uh, respect your parents. Love your parents. Appreciate your parents. To, to get to where you're gonna go, you need to know where you've been, where you came from, right? It's pretty simple. So learn about your history, learn about your family, learn about, just start with there. Don't look at me as, as your motivator, role model, whatever. Your motivator should be your parents, first and foremost. So that's the final message, is that. Look within your family, look within your parents. And don't want to forget to look them closely, okay? Inspect them. Okay, that message is very powerful. When, I, when that message was taught to me uh, in one of my retreats, I was in tears. Because I, I didn't really know how my parents looked like. I love them to death. Oh my God, I love them. But yet, when the, when the teacher asked the audience, do you know what their parents look like? Um, please close your eyes. Do you know what their parents look like? And I closed my eyes, I was like, oh my God, I don't have a face to them. I just have a figure. Know? And I was in tears. It's like, oh my God, I don't know what my parents look like. So do that. Do that. You 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 would never have to regret knowing what your parents look like. Very simple message. And uh, experience your um, appreciate your, your 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 origin. Be proud of who you are. Don't get bully bully on. Work on breaking down pair barriers kick down stereotypes, right? Be passionate about it. Get angry with it. You know? So the fire within you. Once you identify this thing and if you don't continue to put a good source in it, what a good source? Knowledge, lessons. Your fire ultimately dim and die. You don't want to do that. Because as an in, in individual, the one thing that is within you that keep you going, that, can, that give you strength to lift the world, is that fire within you. Whatever that ingredient within, within the fire is, individually we find by you guys. Because each one of you guys' experience is different, right? But make sure to work on that fire, to put more wood in it, to, to put more fuel to it. Hell, once in a while, dump a gasoline can onto it. And that fire will bring you happiness. Because life is not about how many cars you have, how, many, how big your house is. It's not about that. How many, how many digits is your bank account? 
life is about happiness. And the end of your life, money, everything that is materialistic will be forgotten in a short period of time. But if your life's work is focused on just one thing, to have something mean, meaningful, where it, ha it affects people's life, where, where your course drive will work will lead you into something that changed the world, or to make the world better, a better place, right? Then your life will leave this one thing. It's called a legacy. So legacy of your life's work is something you should keep in mind. That's what your life work should care about, is a legacy. To make your life work mean something besides money or financial gains. And that, you know, pick, pick, a, pick a field and change the world. Because with that effort, you will leave yourself a legacy. Now for me, a quick learning lesson, you know, uh, everything I've learned, I also try to be good with, uh, with the people around me. You know, obviously, um, I have, I'm an influential figure within my family. My nieces and nephews, they do listen to me, because I'm a cool uncle. <laughs> um, but they both are doing well. My nephew is, um, got his master's degree, you know, so he's going to be an immigration lawyer. So funny, I'll talk about doctor and lawyer, and my niece is going to be a doctor. <laughs> my son is going to be a lawyer. I mean, my, uh, my, uh, my nephew is going to be a lawyer. But it's really their passion. So, um, and my friends, um, you know, with me today is Kai. Um, Kai is a uh, um, self-starter. I met um, Kai later in life. He has a rough upbringing, uh, really rough. Um, everything that I discussed with you is, is really is uh, his story too. But when he met me, um, you know, with motivation, with encouragement, all right, um, jump out there and do it. Just take charge, grab the bull by his horn. And he um, listened to it, and he uh, practiced with it. And he had taught me many lessons, too. Um, but today, I run a successful uh, high-end um, salon um, in Mission Valley. Very successful. And he is his own boss. And he is doing something he loves. And he does, um, he does hair style, style um, and cater to um, stars and name But he also. Uh, do a very good job on everybody. Um, and he is uh, happy doing what he does while having a good income, um, passion. And, let's, let's do it. and I have a lot more story. I just have a clean, he's sitting here. SLC Service is his uh, salon. They have a uh, uh, salon in uh, Michigan Valley. If you ever need a use for looking at yourself look pretty, please see me. Um, but yeah, um, passion guys, do everything with your passions, kick down some doors and hopefully um, you guys will um, be the ones that kick down more barriers. There's a lot more barriers to kick down as Asian American, there's a lot, so think of that. Don't be afraid to become an artist and parents please support your kids if they decide to become an artist. Because artistry is where innovation innovation comes from. So, all right. Well, at this phase, I'm finished with my conversation. I'd like to take any questions that I have. Yeah. Uh, can you tell about Bible song thing? Oh. Can you tell us a bit? Oh, I just yeah, I just have a brief one. Yeah. Um, Battle zone. Oh, oh my God. How oh, are you gonna make me cry? <laughs> Battle zone is a very special place to me um, because um, I put Battle Zone in, in the, the worst neighborhood of Maui. Uh, this is where, the time where a lot of um, drug use was, still is. But, uh, there's a lot of um, drug use. And so kids doesn't really have an um, opportunity to, uh, to have anything fun to do. Because every business or movie theater order, stay away from that area. I decided to put that place down there. Um, to keep the kids in there, through games. Okay, but um, uh, you cannot, if you get one single complaint from parents that you, because of gaming, because of this and that, and your school is affected, 
you will be banned. Ban is three months. And I step foot into battle zone. So we have to ban quite a few students at the beginning. But ultimately, our message got across. Uh, but don't let gaming and consume your life. Um, and you, don't not, you do, do not curse. You cannot curse inside a battle zone. And so with my uh, effort, I, uh, and I got support from a lot of parents. Because now, there is this cool place where kids can come in there. And the games I feel are Counter-Strike was probably going to do it that time, but there's a setting within Counter-Strike where it doesn't give you blood splash. So it was a small thing, we minimized the, 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 the violence. And ultimately, um, you know, a lot of families um, support me, and a lot of um, kids become grown to that place. Um, and because of family love and support, I've grown with a lot of um, Hawaiian-fed meals. I exploded to 240 pounds because I was fed with a lot of uh, po uh, poi and uh, you know good Hawaiian soul food. Um, but anyway, uh, on top of that, I, I got to um, work with um, a person, a kid um, that I um, grown very attached to. Um, his name is Lao. Um, Lao was um, doesn't have parents. He was raised by his grandma, um, Laula Wallace was his name. Uh, when I got, when I know Lau, he was um, ninth grade in high school, and really does, doesn't have a, uh, a man figure in his life. So, um, and through my motivation, uh, after a while, Lau become the staff because he would clean the computer. He's poor; he doesn't have money to pay for the stuff. So. I would let Lao to uh, clean the computer and, and in exchange, he would get undivided use of um, computers. Um, and Lao will also help tease up the, uh, uh, the, the homework room that we had set up. Because kids that come go there, they, they have an opportunity to do their homework using the computer and everything for free. Okay, If you, use, you go to that room and use computers for free, along with the printer and everything. Get your homework done first before you play games. So that's the whole idea. Um, Wood Lao is a very, um, um, to me, is a happy story. Um, kids like him would never have a chance to finish high school just because, you know, there's still so many other distractions growing up, especially in the uh, drug ravaged community. Um, but Lao stuck with me. Sophomore school, we got this, we got a better time in school, junior year, and ultimately, um, by the time I uh, finished, uh, closed down Battle Zone uh, to move on to do something else. Among my travels, this when, um, when I was in Asia, that's when Lao was finished up uh, high school. And he sent me a heartfelt thank you letter. From Uncle Fong. Uncle Fong, thank you for what you've done for me, da, da, da. And I had signed up for Maui Community College, and I was so proud. I was, I was really happy, needless to say. Um, and then um, a few months later, um, you know, um, Brandon uh, messaged me, let me know of the horrible news. Um, Lao had a car accident. Away. Um, so his dream, you know, um, his life was cut short, drastically and tragically. But Lao is in my heart. Lao is that kid, that little kid that that was me. Um, and so that is when I have opportunity to just reach out to young kids I'm always proud of them. What I want and hear my story, hear my message. I mean, you know. Wherever your life is, there is always uh, stories out there you should find motivation. Whenever you have a chance to go to uh, other country, see see power, then you see how much how blessed you are to have here, to have the opportunity here. You have a chance to change the world, to have a chance to go to school. You know, don't take it for granted. As you can see, it's a little bit different from my story when I was talking to Kaiko. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's more details, it's more 
uh, stuff because uh, whatever I bring to this, I have to control me because I get very emotional. And I was very close to my heart. And, uh, and that's why, um, I, like I said, please do not take your current position for granted, guys. Don't, because there's a lot more kids out there at your age who would die to meet your position. Embrace what you have. So the reason you open the bottle zone is to encourage your uh, motivation. Well, to make money, to be honest with you, okay. to make money, uh, because um, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, the uh, there are services where I can uh, teach corporation <coughs> certain software, certain stuff. Where they don't have that many computer, and would hire my place would book out my face to, to train and there's a lot of companies that come over there by way of training. So I would network with them. And I charge um, hourly. Um, so it was it was not entirely um, unprofit. It was it was um, uh, there to make business to money but also to fulfill my social responsibility. So when I decided to uh, close down the business uh, due to competition, um, I have offered to buy this, uh, the company. But I rejected those offers because I really want to embark to my Asia um, journey to study. So I decided to close it down, sell some of the machine to my hardcore players, and then donate. Um, I don't know why yeah, I mentioned that. Um, I donate ten computers and the settings and the printer and everything to this um, Catholic school, and uh, they had. Uh, Pastor here uh, named that computer room Battle Zone. That Battle Zone room, computer room is still there. And so the legacy is always there. Occasionally you see these Facebook face, Facebook posts of uh, people from Hawaii, uh, with the network, talk about Battle Zone. Like, oh my god, those are the golden days. Those are great, you know. Uh, they, they, they consider it to be like a, a corner, you know, neighborhood corner store. And it brings me uh, warm feelings when I talk about my experience on the final song. So anybody else got any questions? Bombard you guys with so much information. So put a few people to sleep. If I may go back to the uh, Asian students needing more scores sure. that day. Um, isn't that even perceived legal, actually? I, uh, being fair and being legal is sort of a different thing. But is that perceived even legal? I For the current... Um, uh, things against our student Asian Americans. Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, the, uh, it's discrimination, and there are lawsuits right now. Uh, I suggest you guys to read up on this and to support whatever ways you can. It is entirely um, ludicrous. It's, it's absurd. Um, but that's how the government or these institutions treat our people. It is 100% um, illegal. And that's why Asian Amer American coalitions are, are sending a message. They are suing Harvard University. And we are going to have to support, unite, to make sure our future generation does, is not going to be faulted for being Asian American. As I was doing my research, I, I forgot to point that out. The, the latest article was on New York Times, was printed a couple of days ago. Uh, one article that I used to discuss up here. Um, about the statistic of, of uh, percentage of test score and everything. It's, it's become more real and every day. And before, everything is open for the public, right? It's been going on already. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. For us to become aware of it, it's already been happening. So we really need to do something about it. And, uh, and that's why more and more my message of Asian American unity is very, very uh, important. Because these situations where where not just Chinese coalitions, but Japanese coalitions, but Asian American coalitions mm -hmm. come together Know, send a strong messages because if you don't make it fair for us, we will not vote for you. That's why my message of voting comes to play too. Votes, encourage votes. Asian Americans do not take time to vote. And that is so bad of us guys. I mean, once you become 18, please go vote because we need those votes to raise our voice, to fix certain things that are, that are unfair for us. And, uh, and it's come real. It's just, but don't let's get dis discouraged, okay? okay? Let's be stronger. We, 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 we uh, adapt. They want us to be bad, the fly will be bad. We'll be stronger too. So. Yes? Um, so, um, 
You started your first business in 2003 in Maui yes. for computer gaming place for um, younger students. And, uh, and then you traveled Asian countries for a while. Uh, how many years? I would say three years total. Three years total. And then you finally found, find out, found out your dream job, which is solar system. Well, the trigger was Obama's speech, right? Yes. So um, to find out your ultimate job mm -hmm. or your most dream job is kind of long span? Do you Absolutely. Think so? Yes. Um, it boils down to everything that I talked about. That's why I had one specific slide up there for this one subject. It's about yourself, right? To understand about yourself. To understand about you, where you come from, etc. Because then once you understand all this, then you become so solid until doing that thing that you want to do. You know what I mean? Your passion. So uh, it took me a few years, it took me a while to learn this thing and to put everything in perspective. And like I said, uh, Suzanne Law, my, my mentor, she put a beautiful thing for me as far as put everything I've learned, segment here, segment there, and she tied it together and encouraged me to learn a certain field. And by doing that, I, I, I learn more and I, I identify my passion. And when a certain opportunity comes about, I'm 100% sure I didn't do it. And with passion, with determination, nothing can stop me. As a matter of fact, if today, if I decide to become an astronaut, to be honest you, it's a matter of time become, I become an astronaut. Um, solar is my passion. I have a future plan of, of helping the Asia continent to go solar, especially Southeast Asia, because the majority of the energy that we get is from China. And um, you know, I'm uh, not anti-Chinese as a people, but I'm very anti-Chinese, the government. And that's why I wonder about death by China. It's heavily, um, it's a good uh, description of how the Chinese government and those few individuals, how they affect the world in a negative way. Again, not the Chinese people. I'm actually, I have some Chinese blood in me, okay? But, um, but that's something that you need to understand. Uh, it's part of you, it's part of what you, you know, I encourage you to buy American made stuff, to promote um, local economy. That's why uh, Toshi's here. One of my first things I tell every, every customer is I'm very proud that I'm, I'm selling all American made products. Uh, you know, we, we need to promote local, uh, Local first, domestic product first, to create jobs for our kids in the future generation. So, uh, as you go, uh, grow older, as you are in a position to be um, decision maker, right, for companies, guys, please, every chance you get to keep things here in America. And you guys are Japanese uh, American ancestry, I'm Vietnamese American ancestry, but uh, we are American. Right? This is our country. Uh, we need to make this country better. Start with Asian, with preserving Asian American, right? But preserving Asian American, I mean, sorry, American together, right? So keep it America. Go America. As, uh, like or not, this country has provided my, my family, myself, I'm sure with along with yours, a lot of opportunities that we wouldn't have otherwise.